Welcome to Vogel Timeline, our quarterly news report keeping you up to date on the latest happenings here at the Vogel 3 and 4 site near Augusta, Georgia. Spring was a busy season here at the site with the arrival of the Unit 3 steam generators. In March, the first generator came in and set the record for the heaviest lift ever to come into the Port of Savannah. The second steam generator for Unit 3 just arrived here on site. We look forward to the Unit 4 generators coming into the port later this year. The proximity of the site to the Port of Savannah has been key in the seamless delivery of components from around the world. In fact, on May 18th, the Unit 4 pressurizer arrived at the Vogel construction site. Fabricated in Italy, the 225,000 pound pressurizer was shipped to the Port of Savannah and then delivered by rail car to the Vogel site. Each Vogel AP1000 has one pressurizer. The function of a pressurizer is to provide a point in the reactor coolant system where liquid and vapor are maintained in equilibrium for pressure control. The Unit 4 pressurizer is the second to arrive at the Vogel construction site. The Unit 3 pressurizer arrived in August of last year. Our most recent lift took place in June at the Unit 4 nuclear island. CA-04 moved from the module assembly building and was lifted into place by the heavy lift derrick. This critical component weighs in at 29 tons and will house the reactor vessel. Over on the Unit 3 side, 72 of 167 shield building panels are on site and ready for assembly for the Unit 3 nuclear island. These panels were fabricated in Newport News, Virginia. Recently, the first course of panels were welded and great progress is being made on this project. To bring us up to date on the status of the Unit 3 shield building is Curtis Shiley, Southern Nuclear Supplier Compliance Manager. The shield building panels are manufactured by Newport News Industrial at Newport News, Virginia. And what they do is they receive metal plates, tie bars, and studs. They assemble them, weld them together, and once the design is complete, inspected, they're okay for delivery. They put them on a flatbed truck, and deliver them to us here at, at the site, unloaded and then re-inspected again on site to ensure that they meet the design specifications. The first delivery actually took place December of 2013 and will be ongoing all the way through next year. Well, as you see behind me, there are several examples of the panels for the shield building. The smaller ones range from one and a half by 11 feet, a total of about 2,300 pounds. The largest are 37 foot by 10 foot and approximately 28,000 pounds. They're assembled here on site. The smaller ones, which are part of our first course, they will actually go in place for the most part one at a time. Additional assembly here on site takes place when two of the larger panels will actually come together and be welded as a set. And then we use those, we'll lift them into place one at a time after we have two sets in place, we'll pour concrete into all four of those panels. So it'll be an incremental step as we go up a total of 150 foot for the shield building. Our responsibility at Southern Nuclear is to ensure the safe and quality compliant construction of these units. The Supplier Compliance Department responsibility to ensure that safe, quality, compliant construction is to perform oversight of the welding process not only at Newport News facility but here on site as well so as they come in our group is responsible for looking at and inspecting the panels to make sure they are meeting the safety and quality compliant per the drawings prior to the actual assembly into the nuclear island. Thanks Curtis for giving us that update on the shield building status. From construction to training to deliveries, there's much to keep track of here at the Vogel 3 and 4 project. Recently, we spoke with Herman Richards, Materials Program Supervisor, to find out more about the monumental task of bringing components on site from all over the world to build the Vogel 3 and 4 project. The coordination and deliveries of the equipment and components to the site is primarily done by Westinghouse and CBI with their engineering and very extensive procurement planning. 
including readiness reviews here on the job site. Contractors who will take possession of the equipment once it arrives on site is able to ask questions in terms of rigging as well as storage requirements. The storage and preservation of the equipment and components are predetermined by engineering and the manufacturer's requirements. My team performs oversight of the contractor's programs and processes. We utilize the compliance monitoring program to perform surveillances to help identify program weaknesses and process gaps. The ultimate goal for my organization is to ensure that the integrity of equipment and components is maintained to ensure safe and reliable operations for the two new Vogel units. Thanks so much, Herman, for updating us on the most recent deliveries of these components. Procurement and construction are vital pieces of the Vogel 3 and 4 story, but the transition to operations readiness is where it all comes together. Four classes for a total of 88 reactor operator and senior operator candidates have completed various phases of rigorous classroom and simulator training. The Nuclear Regulatory Commission will provide an initial examination to a portion of the candidates beginning in November of this year. The remaining candidates will be tested over the next three years. Here with more on the Operation Readiness story is Karen Foley. Our Operational Readiness Organization for Vogel 3 and 4 is really centered around making sure we're ready to receive, test, and accept our new nuclear plants. That includes making sure we have trained individuals, we have our operations ready to run the plant, we have engineering, we have maintenance, RP chemistry training, everything it takes to run a nuclear power plant. We are working to make sure we're ready when the plant's ready for us. Right now we have our initial license class going on, ILT1 is what we call it, and that class will be ready for the NRC test on November 2nd of this year. Operational readiness has three top priorities for 2015. They are safety, people, and our top 10 milestones. So when we talk about safety, it is making sure we keep all of our people safe. It's measured by zero OSHA recordables and that is our goal and we are on track year to date. If we talk about the people part, it's making sure that we have good development plans for people who work on both the operational readiness and construction side, that we have a good game plan for people on what they're gonna do, how we support um, our people and ensuring that they're ready to operate this plant, it is our most important asset. And our third priority is milestones. Earlier this year, we worked with our management team and established top 10 milestones for operational readiness. Our first milestone, which has already been achieved, was our configuration information management software. And that was achieved in January of 2015. Some of the other important dates we have is the last one we have is our engineering programs in place. Half of those programs is the goal for this year. And then again, on November 2nd, we have our goal to achieve our pass rate on our NRC license exam, the first one we have for our new plants. Thanks, Karen, for filling us in on the transition to operational readiness. Well, that's all we have time for today. Thanks for joining us on this exciting journey as we build the first new nuclear in 30 years. Take care, stay safe, and have a great summer. We'll be back in the fall to bring you more great stories here on the Vogel Timeline Report.